and we will be installing all of that right now today on this beauty so we can get the whole front face on and get it all set up all right so we've got the brand new gates 3d molded or cast 3d cast impeller here and we've got the stock one you can look at the factory welds on this one actually no this isn't stock this is aftermarket uh yeah quality on this of course eh. it's old it's used garbage no good new shiny yes yes let's get the bolts for these ones so we can get it on there so i just pulled the old one off of my first motor uh, the one without the vvt to get the bolts out of it and i just realized this one also has the cast impeller the fresh one I just ordered, and the one that was on there. Wow. All right, let's clean these bolts off a little bit. So I actually can't find my uh, Permatex gray, so we're just gonna use the black, it's a little bit overkill, but it'll get the job done. All right. Cool. Then let's put this bad boy on there. Should hold it pretty nice. And I like to put a little bit on here just because it's easier to see what's going on. Just don't scratch the metal surface. And boom. They say, I think you're supposed to let it sit for a few minutes. Let it get a little bit hard, just a little bit. And then you can push it together. All right, so let's bolt this thing in. Do not lose these while we're doing this. So all the bolts are here, they're of equal length, nothing to worry about there. Let's just go ahead and get one of them in there. We're gonna line it up with this pedestal there and then just send it. to 19 foot pounds so let's set up our rig with all of our adapters and we are going to do 17 I think that's a safe bet so that is torqued up and on so now we can finally get our cam cover on and then start putting our cams on and our ATI damper so we've got our beautifully freshly painted black cam cover. We're gonna put the, uh, the rubber gasket thing that was in there back after the paint. And then what we've gotta do is get our coolant neck installed. I haven't decided yet on what we're gonna do with the reroute, but uh, it's better I put it in now. And if I don't do the reroute, we have it there to use then later. So we'll see. Let's get this on. If you are finding this hard to get on, there are notches and it only goes one way. So one way fits better than the other for sure. If you're having issues, just flip it around. Boom. So I actually don't think this O-ring comes in our kit from Rock Auto. But I've been reading and apparently some RTV will do the job just the same. And I believe it. So we're gonna do it. This is one of the first shortcuts that we are taking here. Uh, not proud of it. 
what I'm gonna do. If I find that O-ring within the next day or two before this is too buttoned up, I will replace it. But as for tonight, it will go on. Town. So, what I just did to get those on, don't do that. Bad idea. Get the O-ring, do it right. But it's on, so we're gonna proceed. So let's get our cover on there. And when you put the cover on, you want the E and the I facing towards you. This is for your timing. And just slap that back there and it'll wrap really nicely around that coolant neck and gasket up with that surface we just put in. I'm only gonna do them as tight as this electrical will do it because they're just really for looks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna install the exhaust with this pin right here on the E. So we put it like that. You can see the pin is there and we're facing the E. We're gonna get our bolt and our washer. And we're just gonna work that in there. We're gonna run it down and then follow our torque spec. So it says 20 to 38 foot pounds. So we are going to lay down, let's do 35. Now for holding it down, I like to use an adjustable so we can fit our desired size easily. So I don't think I have sockets that big, which might cause a problem when we're doing our timing, but problems for later. Let's get this cranked. Okay, so now to get this one off, what we have to do is get this cap off of our VVT control system. So apparently these strip out extremely easy, so we're gonna be very careful. And it is a T25. Another thing you wanna do is make sure this surface is clean and clear as well as in here, because this is actually what makes the sealing surface between the inside and outside of that o-ring right there great so now this one doesn't really have much of a uh, issue with the alignment as you can see there's some alignment positions in there so we just really send it and twist it until she falls into place there we go now that it's seated we're gonna put our bolt in there. I'm gonna use the same torque spec of uh, 35 foot pounds to get that down as well. Let's just grip it and crank. There we go. Once you get that on, you wanna reinsert this. I do not know the torque spec for these. I'm gonna go a little over, just comfy tight with your hand. Okay, so the next part is to install your idler and your tensioner. So I don't actually have a new idler and tensioner, but I don't think the old one was bad, so we're gonna go with that one. We wanna do the tensioner just hand tight, and the idler we want to torque all the way. So I was actually wrong. The torque on these are not 35. This guy here on the forms just says it's 37 to 44 foot pounds. These are actually 35. So we're gonna torque these to 35 and then open this cap and retorque both of these to around, let's do 40. Okay, so we have to get this installed on our damper as well as our pulley guide. It does not fit the OEM one on the damper. 
So we have to figure out the directions for this, so let's read the instructions. All right, so I don't see much documentation for using this specific trigger wheel on here. The one that comes with the Flying Miata kit has a notch of exactly where you're supposed to put it. But since I have the OEM one that does have a dimple, and I do have my OEM demper, what I'm gonna do is try and line this one up, and then match the teeth on here, and then relocate that onto this one. So on the factory damper, your uh, trigger wheel actually gets sandwiched by this plate right here. So what we won't actually want to do is line this up with that pin, and then also line this up with our wheel here. And now we see what the assembly would look like. And you see where the woodruff key would be. So now what we're going to do is take this bad boy and overlay it until we can get our teeth to line up. So actually checking, it doesn't look like it matters that much. As long as you have the two prongs together and the two prongs together, this is top dead center. So going through here, you have one right here, maybe two degrees off. Another over here, about 30 degrees. And then the reflection of that on this side. So with this being top dead center, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ATI damper. We're gonna take off the guide on the rear. If yours isn't already off, there's a small pin that holds that in line. Sometimes it's installed in here, sometimes it's installed in there. So we just pull that off. And now to mimic this setup, we're going to take this exactly like that. And we want to find the same top dead center. So let us emulate where the Woodruff key would be. So right there. That actually works out really nicely. Like I said before, top dead center. We're about a few degrees off to the side here, 30 here, a few degrees off from top dead center there, about 30 there. And that lines up really nice. And we can move on with installing this. So now our belt guide, we wanna put with the flanged surface up. Doesn't really matter which rotation we're using here. And that goes like that. Just line that up with the bolt holes. And then we wanna use the included bolts with some, I think it's blue Loctite. I only have one Loctite available to me, so that's what I'm gonna be using. And they are Allen key bolts. install this again and then get it on there all right all right let's drape our belt in the position that we need it so we want to just lazily put it on there and this is why we leave this loose so we can leave some gap in there for when we slide this bad boy on but then we want to install our cover to make that a little easier to use later so the letters on this were fading a little bit and I got some, uh, some very nice nail polish and just had my girlfriend give that a nice lick so that we can see that a little better later. So we slide this in here past the wheel and it should just be two bolts here and here and the one here we can work on later. But these ones will be blocked. Then we feed our two bolts in there. We don't really care much for the torque that is applied on these. Once again, they're like these ones just to hold on the covers. All right, now that this is assembled and sat for a few seconds to dry, and we are going to line up our keyway with that notch in there. And we wanna make sure we have enough slack in our belt to accommodate. So, we line that up. 
we show her a little bit of love with the mallet. We watch it to make sure we're sliding on straight. You can see through the middle there. And then we, what we want to do is slide our fresh new bolt in there. And that'll suck it in. Alright, so now that we've got it in there, we want to set our crank pulley main bolt late 1991 to present, which is now. We're going to set 116 to 122 foot pounds. So that is quite a lot, and I believe this assembly will begin to rotate. So what we're going to do is try to shim it from the back using the uh, bolts for the flywheel. But first, we want to get as many threads as we can by hand, then we'll torque her down. So now we want to max out our torque wrench. <laughs> I'm just playing. We want to get it up to 119. All right, let's get our 21 deep socket. Let's see how far we can get before it starts to spin. Still checking to make sure that our belt is out of the way. And we want to make sure that our rotation are, is not moving the whole assembly. You can check on the back to see if the crank is spinning. All right, we're starting to spin now. So what we want to do is figure out a way to hold it down in the back. So we're going to go with the method that allows you to put a few studs in the back of the crank where the flywheel is supposed to be. Okay, so now what we want to do is lodge something in between the two crank pulley bolts so that it doesn't move while we're cranking this on. I'm going to use this wrench. All right, now we have it compressed in there and let's keep working. Check our belt again. Our belt is still free, and we haven't hit our torque yet. There we go. That is our desired torque of 118 foot-pounds. Now you spin that slightly, and your wrench falls out. Now you want to unthread the flywheel bolts to make sure that you haven't ruined them. We're not going to time the car tonight because it is getting rather late. So we're just going to slide it on. Cool. She's starting to look more like a motor. I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the ATI super damper and the gates RPM timing belt installed. 